Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that's like reading papers with me, how I read papers on my iPad for my PhD studies. So hopefully this video will be useful for you and I know it's been long awaited so thanks everyone for your patience. Just a couple of quick updates before we get started. If you want to skip this I'll have every timestamp linked down below but I recently filmed a podcast episode for the PhD Life Raft podcast and that is coming out tomorrow. So if you want to check that out, I'll have the information linked down below. Um, the podcast is really, really good for PhD students, I feel. They actually recently did an episode on the imposter syndrome, which some of you were asking me about before. And they also did an interview with Alex Sujung Kim Pang, who wrote the book Rest, which is one of my favorite books for like work-life balance and especially for doing PhD work. So I really highly recommend checking that out. It was really fun and I'm so glad that I was asked. Definitely check that out. If you like this kind of PhD content, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when new videos are uploaded. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up because it really helps me out. And I know you guys are always looking for ways to support me. So thanks so much to everyone who does give a thumbs up or leaves a comment below. So I will have all of these products linked down below, but just to mention, firstly, I'm using a standard iPad. It's the 10.2 inch iPad. It's not an iPad Pro, the main reason being I don't like do any proper work on this laptop. I use it for notes and planning and as well, obviously reading papers and things like that. So I don't like do any analysis or anything like that on here. I'm also using the Apple Pencil. I know that you can like make your own ones of these, but that wasn't something I personally wanted to do. I like having this because it's just, it works better than your own kind of DIY ones, especially like trying to get more precise like with the tip especially for doing planning and writing and things like that i think the diy ones don't work as well for things like that i also have a protector on the front of this which is called from a company called paperlike i believe and it essentially makes the writing on the ipad feel like paper so you can kind of hear hopefully that it's scratchy compared to when you have the just plain ipad um, like without any cover it just feels very smooth and a bit slippery so for like writing and things like that I just feel like it's easier to have this the thing is I'll just show you what it looks like with the iPad off so it makes it look more like a Kindle like the actual screen it would be a lot shinier and a lot smoother without the cover so that was something that straight away when I got the iPad and I put the cover on I was a bit disappointed because Obviously the display is so much better without it. But again, like that's not really what I use it for. And I do like working with the screen protector on. Then the other thing I just have is this OtterBox cover. So I don't have a front cover because I do have the screen protector and obviously the OtterBox around the edges means if I drop it, it's gonna be fine. Like similar to any other OtterBox really. And it has a grip for my Apple Pencil. So I usually just carry it around like this. Um, and I really, really like it. I've been loving using my iPad. I really haven't been sharing much about it on here, but I use it pretty much every day. Um, I will be walking around the house with it at all times, pretty much plan a lot. And I like getting my thoughts out onto something often. So um, I can do a separate video about like how I organize all like my notes, and my plans and stuff like that. Like just going through good notes in general. If you would like to see something like that, be sure to leave a comment below saying that. So let's get into this. So I'm going to be reading a paper that I know I'm going to read in full because it was one that my supervisor suggested I read because it's very similar to the type of work I'm doing and it's something that I could potentially try to do like a repeatability study with a larger data set than the one they used in this paper because we have a larger data set. And so I know I'm gonna read this in full and I know I'm gonna to want to look deeply at the methods and stuff like that because it's going to be something I'll want to like adapt or reuse. So if you've seen my other video about reading papers which is just on my laptop then you'll know I don't tend to read all papers in full. If I come across a paper that seems interesting and then I start getting into it and I don't find it to be as interesting then I won't read it in full and I think it's important to just know typically when to cut your ties because otherwise you could end up like spending years of your life reading papers that aren't very important. 
but I'm not gonna get into that too much in this video. I talked about it a little bit more in the other video. So today it's just about showing you like how I read papers on my iPad and how I actually track the notes and what I do with the notes as well. So I'm going to have a little screen recording of what's going on and I'll be talking through the process and I will be reading this real time, but I'll probably just speed up the bits. First thing I'm gonna do is just get another uh, notebook going. So, um, where do I wanna put this? I might just add this right into the paper. So this way I'll be able to track all of my notes inside this paper. Um, do I want this kind of paper? So in Good Notes, you can change up the paper. Um, I think this is fine. So this will just be somewhere that I can leave all my notes and be able to kind of come back and forward through to there. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is read the abstract and usually I will highlight the entire abstract because everything is important. So I'm just using the highlighter tool. I'm gonna use a yellow highlighter and just make sure it's a decent size. Or do I want a bigger size? It's too big. Yeah, I'll use the smaller, maybe I'll just, okay. That a good size sure so what I like about this is you can really um, highlight things by hand whereas I think reading papers on something like Mendeley you know you highlight things in a different way and I just feel like I much prefer it feels like you're doing this with a printed out paper but I prefer having a digital version I'm just gonna have a read through this and I'll highlight it as I go So the next thing I'm going to do is just write some brief notes in the margin and that means that when I go to look at this PDF again, I will have my notes exactly in the margin. So I do that in GoodNotes using the little pen function and it just means that, yeah, I'll have those notes then always. So the next thing I'm going to do is read the conclusion. So I'm using a similar method that I used in my last reading papers video for the way that I read the papers. Okay, so I've just seen that this paper doesn't have a typical conclusion um, and I don't really want to read the entire discussion just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and read the introduction first instead. The problem with a paper like this that I find for reading it is that you don't have the same margin space. So that's a bit annoying. So I'm hoping that this won't get in the way too much, but it means if I have any notes, I can go ahead and put them in that page at the beginning of it as well. For the moment, I'm just gonna have a read through and I will just add any notes that I feel are relevant. So this seems to be like an introduction and related work section all in one. So what I like to do when I'm reading um, anything to do with related work is I will actually highlight different papers. Here we have like three to five, let's say, those that are for a specific sentence. So what I like to do is I will highlight at the end of the paper, the references that go together, like I'll group them and put a little note for what the reference was for them. So for example, here I have um, endurance running may have evolved two million years ago. That's one, and then probably goes back as far as the Olympic games, that's number two. And then I have three to five is all about wearable sensors and like huge data developing and things like that. So as I'm reading through the like introduction and related work section, because typically these kinds of papers would that be ones that I want to look into because this paper is so relevant to my field, then it means that I will usually like add these papers to my list of papers that I would like to read.
So because this paper is short um, and the way it's laid out, I've decided that I'm gonna continue reading it in the way that it is delivered. So going into the results and then the discussion. Um, I think if this was a paper where I wasn't sure if I was gonna read the whole thing, I would probably take a different approach and be more likely to you know, read some of the discussion and conclusion elements first and then go back and read the methods if I then was interested. But because I know I want to read this paper in full, I'm just going to go ahead and read it in full. So I've decided to flick back to the discussion because I realise that this paper is sort of weirdly laid out insofar as they go from like the intro and related work section into a results section which sort of contains methods and then we have a method section, then we have a discussion section which contains more about the methods and like I read the results section method part and I still am not 100% sure of how to implement what's given in this paper. So I'm deciding now to read the methods part of the discussion section. And I'm hoping that that will help a little bit to understand this a little bit more. I do see that they have some code availability and that might be helpful. Um, and so far I'm just seeing a couple of things that like they've pointed out as being limitations that I know given the data that we have wouldn't be limitations which is interesting it means that i'm start starting to see that there is a potential for a project to occur here that would um like fill in some of the gaps and like build on the already very you know promising work that's been done um as they've found really good accuracy in their model but they have pointed out some things that could lead it to have had um you know limitations which would be able we would be able to address in some way so i'm just going to go ahead now and read that section the sort of method section of the discussion um and i think that will help me just understand a little bit more and then i can go back and look over the results in more detail
so then I just went back over the results that I said I wasn't completely like gelling with initially after reading the methods I went back over the results and then I wrote some notes on the paper like different things that I'm just thinking of upon initial reading and sort of points that need to be addressed before I can continue um, I definitely I also took a quick look at the code that was associated for this paper just to see could I get a grip with it like initially and I personally found that you know my OR skills are quite rusty so I you know I had a brief look through it but it definitely wasn't something that I could just read through and get but this paper it's one that I'm gonna need to read a couple times particularly for like the methods of actually calculating the performance prediction time um, which I think this is probably a good paper for me to have shown on the channel because I think like sometimes you'll be reading papers that you literally just get straight away and you can summarize it easily and those are ones that'll go sort of into the related work section like fit in really easily whereas this is a paper that I want to try and do like a replication study for so it definitely is more complicated because I need to really understand it like deep deep down and I definitely don't feel like I could straight away implement it before reading over it a couple more times, um, which I think is fine. Um, so I need to read over it some more to really get the method down, but I don't think that's something I'll do today. So altogether, it took me around an hour to read this paper because I was really trying to focus on getting it in. Um, and it definitely depends paper to paper. Some will be really quick reads because I'll be able to just scan through it, get the gist, and that's all I really need to know. Whereas other papers like this one will just take that bit longer. But I do feel like having now the notes in my PDFs is great because it means when I go back in to look at the paper again, I'll have all of those notes there and I'll be able to just straight away remind myself what was going on when I was reading through it. So I really do love using my iPad for this. I'm sure you could use probably any sort of a tablet to do something similar. What I like about using the iPad as well, it means I can chill a bit more when I'm reading the papers, so I can just sort of lay down and have a read compared to being on your laptop close to the screen. It's just a little bit more, it can be a bit more com uncomfortable to stay in that position for a long time. Whereas with reading on my papers on the iPad, I feel like I can move around a bit more and it's just a bit more like breaking things up than being in like your desk all day. So as I mentioned, I will have all of this stuff linked down below. Um, and I really hope this video was interesting for you. I hope it will be helpful in some way. I never really know when I'm making these types of videos if they are helpful. So hopefully they are. And thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much to all of my patrons. You make it possible for me to keep making these videos and you motivate me to keep making these videos when I'm really busy. So thanks so much for your support. And I will see you all in the next video.